Hey, Turbs, why are you so tired? It's a rare sight, a sleepy turbo. Don't see that very often. I'm sure that'll change. In like half an hour, he's just refueling. Sun does feel nice though. Hey, what's up, Gardner friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, beautiful day. Had a cloud in the sky, which actually I prefer some clouds for filming, but that's all right. It's not too hot, not too cold. It's only like 92, something like that. Gorgeous day. I need to pull all of this out. All of these plants gotta come out and I have to reroute my drip and get things potted up. I, I won't go through the potting and everything because y'all saw me plan this out in a video a long time ago. The only reason I hadn't gotten around to actually planting this up yet is because I was having second thoughts on the orange New Guinea impatient that's in here. When I planned this out, I had mentioned that I had the variegated sun impatient in here, one of these. Last year and the year before, actually I think in the year before, I've done it a few years in a row. And last year it was more spindly. The growth was more stretched out and elongated, which is indicative of not getting enough light. But the Robolini palm, which is right here, the pygmy date palm, it's done a good amount of growing. And uh, the foliage, which used to be down here, is all gone. Meaning that more sunlight is coming through to in here. Anyways, long story short, now that I already did the long story, this wasn't that long. Those really hot triple digit temperatures we had been having, I just wanted to sit back and see how the New Guinea was going to do here because there's more sun here than I had anticipated. But it seems okay. There was a point where I wasn't quite sure because it did what, what annuals do in general. It had been very flushed out with lots and lots of flowers and those fell off. And so uh, I just thought I should sit back and wait and see if it pushes out more. So if it doesn't push out more, that means not enough light. If it stays wilty and more light green like it is right now, that's newer growth though. So I'm not really concerned about how light green this is. Though I think getting this into a fresh soil mixture would probably be a good idea because I see some veining and stuff in there that could tell me it needs some more nutrients. Anyways, as of this morning, it's budding has new flowers opening up. The spot should be okay for it. I mean, it doesn't really matter. First day of summer's tomorrow and a few days ago when this video comes out and that when that happens, the sun shifts up. It's directly above everything. So these actually will get more shade. I'm gonna do it anyways. I'm gonna plant them in here. That was, that's the reason I haven't potted these up yet. It was cause I just, I was overthinking things. I did the thing that I do where something really simple just turns into like a tornado in my brain. And I'm like, oh no, am I making the wrong decision? with an annual where if it was the wrong decision, just rip it out and try again. <sighs> I do these things to myself, whatever. I'm self-aware, at least I know what's going on. Maybe someday I'll be able to correct it. Other things I would like to get done this week. Maybe mess around with this hot tub wall over here. Go ahead and get this in shape. The problem is I have so many things that need to be repotted and I'm waiting on a big potting soil order. That's why I haven't really touched this area all that much. I have these planters put together they haven't started to fill out yet, so they're not looking fantastic. I don't think I've even talked about these, have I? I don't think so. Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum, those were down in the planter with the Alexander Palm. I pulled them out and put some of the Lemon Coral Sedum in their place. A Variegated Sun Impatient, Tropical Rose, Black Hunu Electric Blue Gecko, Colocasia, a couple of Canary Wing Begonias, and then the Monarch's Buffet or Monarch Banquet, cannot remember variegated Asclepius, which is, I know seems out of place. It should be behind the, I wanted it front and center because I'd make sure there was enough air circulation around it. And these tend to be aphid magnets. So I have to stay on top of them to keep the aphids off and keep them nice and clean for the caterpillars. I mean, I don't know if the monarchs will even go for this with it being variegated, but you know, we'll see. Yeah, still a lot of filling out to do in there. I should really probably come in here and give these impatience a chop so that they'll fill out and be more even. Yeah, I just can't bring myself to do it, which is stupid, right? Know that if cut that in half, it's gonna put more growth out from the bottom and it's gonna be a nice plant overall, or I can just overthink it like I've been doing with everything. I'm being, being a little dramatic there. I haven't fully decided if I want to keep those variegated sun impatience in there because I have another basket I could divide up, which would put basically full size one in these containers. So that's Oh. But in the meantime, I need to come over here and pull all of this out, get the wall cleared so I can reroute the drip behind everything and then proceed from there. And once the sun's over there, I'm not doing it. So ooh, maybe I might not even be doing this right now. We'll see. It's been a few hours. By a few hours, I mean like 
40 something. I just, I was having creativity block. Not, okay, a little bit of that. And it was just so hot. Last couple of days were just so sticky that I didn't feel like it. I didn't want to mess with it. Did what I could without burning things out. Well, the shadows are really harsh right now. So here's what's happening over here. The succulent seashells. That was in a previous video. I had these actually planted up with some vinca and then decided I didn't like it. As much as I love a vinca, it was hiding those shells too much and I really wanted succulents in there, which I had already known. So I figured may as well just do that. Get those succulents in there. I potted up the Hamelia patens right here in this blue pot. And then I have this pink hibiscus right next to it and everything else is pretty much the same, right? We've, we've been through all this? I don't think we have. Vista Indigo, Super Super Petunia, Super Petunia, Vista Indigo. My sister calls them Super Petunias and now that's stuck in my head. The Indigo, right here on the corner. I didn't put it in the middle because I figured you wouldn't really be able to see it. So it's draping over the corner, a couple canary wing begonias with a lovely curcuma ginger coming up in the middle. And there's a Persian shield back there just because I had an extra and I figured I was like, oh, there's a lot of purple going on here. Why not? And then I got the Cordelin Fruticasa Kiwi. I'm pretty sure this is a Kiwi. Potted up with all of the leftover Catharanthus. Figured these, these should pair fairly well together. What you doing down there, bud? Turbo, what you doing? Catharanthus are pretty good with dry conditions and so are the Cordelins. So I thought that those would go nicely together. I only had three. Couldn't take it all the way around by figure. That doesn't really matter. You can't see all the way around the pot anyways. The only thing that I think I would change here is this Hamelia patens. These shrubs get really big and like they'll, that'll probably be a good four to even maybe six feet tall by the end of the growing season, especially once it's up on drip. So that's not going to work there. I would like to have something smaller in that pot and I was thinking maybe the Pepe La Palm pomegranate which is just looking great. Looking real cute. Got lots of little flowers on it. Even some tiny little pomegranates are getting ready to pop out on there. I think that would be a good option for that pot. Partially because this pot needs to come inside during the winter time. I noticed that it has a small crack in it from this past winter. It is supposed to be frost proof, but it has a crack in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that's not true. And the pomegranate, I'm trying to get the tag in there. You see it, Pepe La Palm. Pomegranate out of focus, you get it. This is a plant I plan on bringing inside during the winter. The Hamelia patens, they're usually like six to 10 bucks. I usually just grab a new one every single winter. I take them inside sometimes. I just have a feeling that if I have a lot of plants or things are chaotic this fall, moving things inside, that's one that I'd say, nah, I'm not gonna take it in. So I'm going to put the pomegranate in that pot instead, but not right now because it is bone dry. The drip didn't quite get to it today because Turbo pulled a few of the lines out when we were playing. That's more my fault than his. I should have been paying attention. But you know, when a plant's dry, only thing we should be doing is watering it. So I'm going to let that have a nice drink tomorrow morning. Can get that moved over into the <laughs> other pot, which is right behind Turbo. Oh, and I popped a Super Tunia Vista bubble gum in the front of this Queen Palm pot. And then another one in here underneath the Robo Pump, just because I had two left and they were getting pretty scraggly. They've been in those nursery containers for a long time. And you know when those are in those nursery containers for too long, they start to look pretty sad and wilty. Also, I would like something to cover up the side of that black nursery pot. And this one should poof out enough that it'll cover up the rest. I figure that's a good way to go. I have drip in there, a whole lot of slow release. A few weeks, won't even be able to see that pot. At least not most of it. And then as far as the other plants go that were over here, they were mostly to be used for other projects. So I went ahead and I moved them to where I'll be working on those projects and we can, is the echo coming through on the mic or is it just me? Do I have water in my ears? What's happening? I think my voice is like reverberating off the house and back with the, um, I don't know, freaking me out. Talk about it over here. Is that better? Better audio? Yes. Much better, at least for my sanity, I can handle this better. The rest of the stuff that was over here were four other projects. That's all I was going to say. There was a begonia over here, the San Francisco, and it's just with the heat and this, it was just cooking. Wasn't doing well, so I'm gonna try and find a different spot for that tomorrow. So tomorrow I need to, well, I need to repot those. Switch the Pepe La Palm over into the pot where the Hamelia Patens is. There's that begonia, just looking real sad. I mentioned when I picked this up from the nursery that I don't usually do great with this particular begonia, but I thought I'd give it a try. It will. <laughs> here it is. The triple digit temps in the sun. It's too much for this poor thing. That's why I moved it over here to where it's getting some more shade. And 
Yeah, we'll see what happens with it. I think this is nice. There's less going on, it's less claustrophobic. When I was coming out the door, there was just too much over here to the side. A few less pots on the ground, which is also really important because there is a, like a channel that runs behind everything through here that just constantly gets clogged up with soil and debris. Anytime we have a storm, that's where everything falls down and junks up. And in order to get it cleaned out, I have to move everything. I would much rather only have the four little pots. There's five right now because of Pepe La Palm pomegranate, but the rest, you can just scoot them out. It's gonna make cleaning that area up so much easier. A lot easier to maintain. Anyways, okay, that's enough. We'll pick back up in the morning. Good morning, or half a second later. I already pulled the Hamilia out of this pot right here. I didn't mention that I had drilled a hole in here. It goes all the way through. These pots with the attached drainage dishes on them, see that down there? I'm not the biggest fan of those because they tend to just make it so that the plant sits in the water unless it's raised up from the drainage dish, which it, it very rarely is. That's not normally the case. So I drilled a hole in there that goes all the way through and that should make it so water drains freely. Well-drained soil, that's really important for pomegranate. They do not like to sit in water. Is that the right height? I think that's that's about perfect. Let's get that off of there. Yeah, that's good. So I'm just using all-purpose potting mix, not doing anything special with. The main thing is just that it drains well and is neutral to slightly acidic. That's what a pomegranate loves. That's all there is to it. The main thing with this that I've wondered about is if I should shake out some of that old mix that's in there, but those roots are looking kind of delicate, so I don't know if that would be a good idea. There we go. That to me feels like a much better long-term pot for that plant. Now I just need to backfill this one and, and move on. Isn't it cute? I love the Pepe La Palm pomegranate with the tiny little orange flowers dangling up there. This one gets three to four feet high, about three feet wide. The <laughs> turbo almost knocked me over. Say zone seven and up, they bloom on new wood. I'm in 6A, 6B, right on the line. So this is coming inside during the winter time and I will keep it someplace that's bright, cool, and more on the dry side. Think like Mediterranean winter sort of condition. Similar to how I've always kept my oleanders and gardenias during the winter time. The main difference is going to be, well, this winter I Things are different. The growth space, I have a new heater in there, so I don't really have a cool spot anymore, so I'm gonna to have to figure something else out in that regard with this plant during the wintertime. Hey, Turbo, how you doing, baby? Good boy. Uh, excuse you. This is what I was talking about. Everywhere I need to be, there's a Turbo right in front of me. Can you let's come over here? Come over here, good boy. The only other thing I will mention is with plants where you plan to keep them in the same pot for a while, this one probably two to three years something along those lines. I normally found it to be a good idea to make sure that the top of the pot isn't smaller than the bottom. And this one is, there's a very slight change in diameter. So the top is just a little bit smaller than the bottom. Only reason that matters is because when it <laughs> becomes time to repot the plant, it's harder to get the root ball out if things are really small down there. I don't anticipate that being much of a problem with this plant though. Look at that little pomegranate. Getting ready to ripen up there. This one, as far as edibility goes, you can eat them, but from what Proven Winter says, there's only like a few seeds inside each one, so it's mostly grown as an ornamental. Flowers very heavily. This thing's been in flower for several weeks now. Remember earlier when I was talking about how I had the vinca in that succulent container? Well, here's where I dropped that. I think that that would look nice in this pot. It's already nice and full, but I need to get this planted up. I need to get this whole container put. Let's do that. Let's just Go ahead and handle that. We have some worm castings, some slow release, and then I need to find some potting mix. Hopefully I have enough to use for this. I don't think I'm going to need very much. I should have enough somewhere. Uh-oh, see that? That is, I believe, a spring fling caladium, which is just one of my favorites. I love that one. Did you hear my voice crack there? It happens. It's a really fun caladium. It has like a vibrant pink almost translucent not almost it is a translucent leaf with really really green veining in it i'm glad that that survived the winter or the winter storage that is i don't want to dig that up i guess i could just move it because it's kind of in the way i had that quarter one front of sitting in here and i don't really see that working in here but i don't know maybe yeah, on second thought ignore everything i said i don't know if that's a spring fling that's what it looks like but i could have sworn i had that planted over here I don't remember having a Florida Beauty Caladium in the back though. I think that the pot's the other way around, but I definitely didn't have this 
over there. Is that a centipede? I don't know. I'm going to think about that for a minute here and try and see if I can loosen up enough of this root mass in here to squeeze that vinca in. It has a nice size root ball on it, so I'm not positive if that's going to fit. It goes slow enough. There should be enough space here in the front to work out enough soil to be able to get that planted down in there. Almost. That's close. Not quite there. There we go. That's about level. I think that'll do. Isn't that a beautiful plant? I have these shadows. That time of year, sun's directly above head. Hard to get things looking perfect when there aren't any clouds in the sky. I think that'll be good there. That should stay put. That shouldn't interfere with this caladium over here at all. There's a heliconia that I want to put in this corner right here, but it hasn't shown up yet in the mail. So I need to make sure to leave that spot open. And then I had, what were the, I had other plants sitting. Oh, the ginger. What did I, where did I put the ginger? That's right. That's why I had said, uh-oh, because I want it to go right, right there where that caladium is. So I'm not going to move that. I like that caladium. Hmm. I could potentially put this right here. Seems unlikely I'll be able to get that much space dug out in the pot though. And I had that cordal in there, but that cordal is not going to fit there either. If that thing's not going to fit there. Dang it. Having one of those, I want my... I want to have my cake and eat it too. Okay, and the drip saw. I'm going to turn that off. You know what? It's a caladium. It'll be fine. I'm just going to scoot it over here to the other side of the pot. So the problem here is that this isn't a plant. I meant to mention this with the pomegranate too. These aren't plants where I'm all that comfortable disturbing the roots very much, particularly because it's in flower. So those beautiful flowers on there. Messing with those roots very much is going to interfere with the flowering and the stability. So I could get in there and loosen a lot of that soil out of the root mass, but it's not going to have any stability, which I guess is okay. I could just stake it up. That might be an option. You see the root mass on there? Really isn't much I could do to loosen that up without doing some damage. It smells so good. It smells like, well, it smells like ginger. I guess I don't need to explain that one too much, do I? Probably know what ginger smells like. There's a gap like right around here. I might be able to dig a hole big enough. Oh, we'll see. I'm going to actually cut the camera off and come back because it's got the little flame thing flashing. Don't want to overheat. Look at that. Well, there's a will, there's a way. I just spent a long, long, long time teasing out those roots, teasing the soil out of the roots and got it nice and shallow and kind of pancake-like and it just sat right down in there and it seems to be holding up. We'll see if it stays that way. I feel like it may end up falling over if it does. Not a big deal. I'll put some stakes on it over here i have to remember i need to leave a gap for the heliconia that hasn't come in the mail yet i wanted to put an alocasia in here there's already a lot of big bold foliage going on but i still i think that would mm -hmm. if i can make it fit in here which i think i can i'm going to put in this tuber right here this is a tuber and offset if we even see it this lighting it's just horrible today see it, this isn't going to have to be down in that soil very far just like right there and that's it that's where the move I, mean, I guess i could put it in sideways but i don't want to this is a piece off of my alocasia macroriza variegata so you can't really see the variegation on it right now because it's so little but sturdy grower it's going to put on size quickly and i think that's going to look nice right here in between those two trunks with the ginger right next we'll talk about the decisions when i'm done okay i know it doesn't look like there's much going on in here but in a few weeks i think that this is going to be looking really full and really nice i'm going to toss in a very 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 generous amount of earthworm castings into this to help liven up that soil this pots had the same soil in it for like three years so i try and make sure to freshen that up whenever i have the opportunity i'll throw some more regular soil in here and i think that this will be good Nope, I need to run the drip. I have to put new drip on it. Is that better? Less light glaring on everything. Less camera burning in my hands. I had to wait till the sun went away. This thing just kept overheating. It's not even that hot outside. It's like 90, but the sun was just really strong. It doesn't matter. There's the Vinca. This is a Cora Cascade Strawberry looking a little bit scraggly. I guess that's the word I would use, but that will straighten itself out over time. I did have to tear at the roots just a smidge to get it in there. Not very much though. The alocasia, like I said, that's going to come up through the middle there and have those nice big heart-shaped leaves, the variegation on them. The Cordelin fredicasa. No, I was I, I couldn't make it fit. There's no way. It's in a 10-inch container. You saw how much space I had to work with down there. Hopefully you saw it. Couldn't see the screen because of the sun. 
I went in and I just set it there. I think that's fine. You really can't even see the pot. Once that ginger starts putting up some more growth, which it has a whole bunch coming up, that what is visible won't even be visible. So that doesn't matter. I also added in this <laughs> coral orange diamantina, which is all the way back there. It has a beautiful flower on it. I'm going to leave this be for a while. I would like for it to fill out some more and then I'll prune it and it'll get more of a bushy shape to it. But when I pulled it out of its container, it really didn't have much going on in the way of roots. So I don't want to disturb it too much. I may go ahead and give it a little cut just to help encourage some root growth, but I don't, I don't want to go overboard, not put it on a trellis. I want it to encourage it to be bushy. And then the spring fling, or I think spring fling caladium. That's like, you can't, you can't, well, you'll get to see it. Hopefully the next video will be opened up. For the beauty back here, nice, big, beautiful heart-shaped leaves on this one. And then we have to just imagine that there's going to be a heliconia in this big empty spot here. The one I have ordered it gets, I think, two to two and a half feet tall and has really cute little orange flowers on it. So that will be filling in this spot. I think that Florida Beauty should be able to get big enough to poke up from behind it and everything else should be nice in front of it. So this is, that's what happened there. Not a huge before and after, right? Because things need to grow. The alocasia and the diamantine and the caladiums are just getting moving, just starting to do their thing. But in a few weeks, this is going to be very, very pretty on oh, the palm tree. There's a beautiful palm tree up there too. <laughs> kind of the star of the show, really. But I'm glad to have that underplanting done. I like the vinca in this because it's covering up most of the little scratches on the pot. You can see the other ones over there. I could add some more paint to it, but, I, but I honestly, I just, I don't really care. It doesn't bother me. It's not that noticeable in person. Like you hardly even see it. It really shines through on camera. Something to mention, the vinca, alocasia, that diamantina, which is like a diplodina, mandevilla, some, some sort of mix. I don't know. All three are plants that don't necessarily like really wet conditions, whereas the ginger and the heliconia that are going to be in there do like things evenly moist. Now with the summer heat, I'm not worried about the even moisture. It's going to be fine. I put four drip heads in here. They're all adjustable drippers. I made sure to hand water this in to get those earthworm castings to go down so that I should point that out. Those really need to be hand watered in to get them to spread throughout the soil. What I was getting at though, as far as moisture is concerned with the vincas not wanting to be stopping wet with the summer heat of getting there, I promise. Not something I'm concerned about. When we move more into fall and the evening temperatures are cooler, that's when I'll be dialing it down, making sure that this isn't like a stopping wet mess because the vinca will just rot away. The alocasia will probably be okay. Uh, by the time the adenidia needs to go away, I would think the alocasia will be dug up and moved out and put into a pot to go into the growth space. But that's all that was, just a little disclaimer. Have some things going on here that like different forms of moisture. Yeah, I like it. Looking forward to it filling out. At least we've gotten a step in that direction. I just went inside to edit this video and like a whole bunch of the footage is gone. Gotta love when that happens. That's why, like I talk about the camera overheating, it messes up certain things. Or maybe it was me, I was just used to it shutting off. Maybe I thought it was, doesn't matter been a few days so here's an update gingers are still standing up looking good this caladium still hasn't opened up which is what has me thinking that it's a spring fling because that one just grows like a snail and i think we've talked about this container enough i don't have a lot of other things to do this week and that's because i did something dumb and like tweaked my i didn't really tweak my back so, okay, quick little story time. Been swimming every day, trying to get back in shape. You know, 2020, 2021, resting, surgeries, all that stuff. And like, I can finally exercise again. And I'm doing it a lot, easing my way in so I don't get injured because then you get set back because you have to recover, all that stuff. I'm being wise about it. Swimming is great because I'm trying to rebuild my shoulder strength because I couldn't really use my right arm all that much for a couple of years. And I have that like divot hole from my skin graft. There's videos about all of this. I'll put it in a little playlist if you want to know what I'm talking about. Trying to build the muscle back up in that spot. Swimming, great way to do that. And it's easy on the joints, great for your endurance, good for muscle building when you use things for resistance. It's good for lean muscle, any period, no matter how you do it. So here's what happened though. I used short fins during one of my swims, doing the dolphin, you know? That's a style I really enjoy because it zips me back and forth really fast. Short fins, if you don't know, they're like fins, but they're shorter. So it helps keep the muscle building in place. Gives you more of a burn. The fins were pressing on the top of my foot. Didn't realize till the next day that that was even really a thing and my foot hurt. So I was like, okay, well, this isn't gonna be a setback. I'll just do today's swim without my feet. I'll just keep my feet together and do 
like three quarters of a mile, 45 laps, just arms. This is after only like three and a half weeks of training, getting back into this. Not even three and a half weeks, two and a half weeks. This is stupid. Stupid thing to do. Great arm and chest workout. Shoulders felt great. It's like just the right amount of soreness where you know you've done a good job the next day. However, if you're not using your feet when you're swimming, you're like this in the water. It's just the head and then my wrists or my feet. So in order to keep everything straight, you have to use your hips, right? You want to maintain the proper posture, have the right line when you're swimming. Uh, so basically I woke up the next day and the muscles from the top of my butt up to the middle of my back were so swollen that they were bulging out and just squeezing my spine. So not a back injury, just like if you work out and you have some sore muscles, it was like that, just in a spot that's uncomfortable and can lead to more problems if you don't let it relax itself. So it's actually been a few days. Haven't gotten a ton done out here because of that, because it's just resting for the most part, doing a lot of stretching, still been swimming, just not as intensely. It'll probably still be a couple more days so I'm lifting heavy things. I got my soil, potting soils here so I can get these mule palms repotted finally. But like I was working on gluing this pot back together and this is about as far as I could get because I was feeling the strain and I was, this is just, this is a bad idea. I told myself to stop because it, like I said, didn't want to lead to a bigger problem, right? have to be careful. I don't like it. I'm not feeling very patient. I have a lot of energy, but here we are. I had initially planned to get the rest of the annuals planted in this video and get this wall taken care of, but I just, I don't think it's a great idea as much as I would like to. I think it still need a couple more days of rest just to be safe. I'm not so great at that whole rest thing. Been there, done that for two years. <laughs> I've still been doing the swimming, just being very careful and methodical about it and doing like half of the laps that I would prefer to be doing. But with back stuff, moving around does help quite a bit. Just need to be careful about it and don't lift anything heavy and just, you know, don't be stupid, right? But there is something I can work on, maybe. I don't, well, maybe, me being the genius that I am, I put this pot right here to help get it glued back together. This is the only thing I could think of to hold these pieces together for the glue to dry. I need, I need to be standing there. I'm not gonna move it, it's not ready to be moved. I'll try and make it work. So this chain here that's hidden by this yellow bamboo, that, see the chain or wire I should say. I ordered a bunch of Spanish moss, pardon the audio changes, I'm looking down and my face is inside the microphone. I have moss I want to tuck in here. I'm going to try and work a bromeliad into this too. I gave this a very gentle scoot in this direction to Somewhat loosen the tension up. I don't know. I don't think it really did. I don't know. Try and lift that up a little bit further. Oh, and if you were, <laughs> guess I don't have any explanation going on here, do I? This wire is wrapped around the trunk of this queen palm because it's in this smaller pot. It's not a small pot, it's like a 30 inch container. But the palm itself is probably 16 feet tall. So the slightest breeze just blows the entire thing over. So I have wire wrapped around it that goes into a stake in the ground back there and then up and up into to a stake over there. So it's, a, it's worked well. We had some pretty intense storms about a week or about two weeks ago. Didn't budge. Okay, I thought maybe I could stand over here, but I don't, uh, eh. All right, okay, maybe that's a better angle. This is just Spanish moss, nothing special. I'm doing a quick chigger check. Should be doing with gloves. I gave it a big rinse. I just get it off of eBay. I had people ask me about that. I just usually type in Spanish moss on eBay and then I find somebody who claims to wash it and keep it off the ground before they ship it out. And that's is usually all it takes to keep this stuff clean is to give it a good rinse and to make sure that it doesn't come in contact with the ground. It wasn't too expensive. It was like, I don't know, seven or eight bucks, something like that per clump. And I got two clumps. And this is how much they sent. Like, look at, can we, it's probably not even in frame. That's a whole lot of Spanish moss. While yes, this is very clean Spanish moss, I will say the majority of it's, most of it's dead. This strand's looking a lot better than the others. I could have just gone to Lowe's or Home Depot or I'm sure a craft store and gotten dry Spanish moss. I, d I was supposed to put the bromeliad in first and here I am done with it. Now I need to put it, it's not that big of a deal. I can just like part it open. I actually don't think I even really left enough. Um, what's the, when something's uh, elasticity, that's not the right word. I'm pretty sure the wire is still too tense to really be able to work this in there, but I will try. Soil out of the roots, it'll be fine. Not a big deal. It's an epiphyte. Those are just there to anchor it onto things. There's probably some mineral uptake 
with the roots too, but the, you know, most of the nutrient comes from in here. From the center of the cups, this is a Neoregelia Fireball. I can just part it open right there. I'm gonna need a wire for this, I bet. I'm gonna need something to, okay. Don't have any wire, I'm sure I do somewhere, but I have a twist tie. So I can probably weave that through here. So I'm saying like the wire is still kind of tight. I don't know if I'll actually be able to do this, but may as well try. Get that pulled through there, and then there's this little runner on the side of the fireball. That's one of the things I love about the fireball. They have little bromeliads on them, like I think maybe eight inches. That's what's typical with those. They get this beautiful red color on them when they're in the sun. More drought tolerant as far as new regelias are concerned. Cover those roots up, which is ideal, right? Don't want those too exposed to the air, even though this is a fairly drought tolerant bromeliad. I like that. Simple, easy, have tons of leftover moss, way, way, way too much of it. I like that turbo, you know, just because I have a tripod doesn't mean you have to be walking around bumping into it. That defeats the purpose of the tripod. Pretty, yes. I wish there wasn't quite as much light in this spot. I mean, I'm happy that there's a good amount of light for the plants that are underneath here, but I would love to tuck some orchids and other things in there, but this is, this is good. I think that's lovely. You can still see the wire coming out from each side, but it's not anywhere near as noticeable. Not at all. There's the actual palm tree all the way up there. Looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to have to make sure that that gets hit with some water every now and then, probably every day since I'm out here every day, but both of these plants can take some dry. Uh, Spanish moss, we'll see how it does. The spot does get a good amount of light, so it may brown up and shrivel. I don't know, even if it does, the effect is still there and I think that it's fine. It's fine, everything's fine. It's a vast improvement. I do wish all this stuff wasn't sitting in front of it. Look at how much moss I have left over. Don't worry, it'll get used. I was thinking I may end up sticking some of it from like beneath some of these lanterns. Thought that might look kind of cool, especially at nighttime because the Spanish moss has this nice silvery texture to it. And it just looks kind of dry and dead. Some of it is dry and dead. I tried to pick through the majority of this and get the stuff that looked like it was alive. Now, it has hope, but like I said, even if it does brown up and dry, not that big of a deal. Just wish this wasn't here right now, but that's all right. The pot's getting back together. Doesn't it look like, do you think that that's, I feel like I'm missing pieces here, right? Because doesn't there look like there's a lot more left to be glued back together than I actually have sitting right here? I don't know. The only possibility is that the other pieces are up there. That's where I had this pot sitting there, up there on the hill. They might be buried under the soil. I don't know. I can't do anything with this till tomorrow anyways. I have to let that rest of that glue dry and then I can probably adjust. I'll work on that in a different video. Or that might just be a solo project. Cause it's not that exciting. It's just glue. And I think that that's everything. I got a new thing. I, there are gonna be people who judge me for it. I really don't care. It was necessary. And no, this isn't where it's staying. I have a platform that this is going to go on where it can be bolted down and it's going to go back here. All this stuff will be gone and it will just, it's a, it's very nice though. It has hot to get the hot water and the cold water out of it. It's supposed to, there's a knob up here you turn to get it to come out of the top like that. The water pressure's good enough with what it's made for. I don't want to waste the hot water though. So I'm going to do some swimming. I'm going to want to be able to rinse off with that. All right, but here's why. Here's the whole story behind that the chlorine being in there about an hour or so every single day, probably a little bit less than that. 45 laps only takes like, I don't know, usually half an hour, something like that. And then I spend more time there warming up and cooling off and just playing with the dogs. The chlorine irritates my skin when I'm in there that much. It means I get in there in the morning, swim, have to go inside, take a shower, then I come back outside, film for these videos or just do general yard work. I get really hot, sweaty, and just gross, and then need to go take another shower in the afternoon. And I usually like to take a shower before I go to bed, but I haven't been doing that if I'm taking one in the afternoon, because that's just, that's too much. That's not good for your skin. But with this, I can hop out of the pool, have a nice rinse, get all that chlorine off the skin, dry off and move on with all the stuff out here, getting hot and sweaty and dirty with the plants, all the plant stuff. I like it. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> I know there'll be people who think that that's a total eyesore. I mean, it is kind of, I honestly, actually, I, I really don't mind it. It doesn't bother me and it's my backyard. That's all that matters. It's not staying there though. It's gonna go further back in that way. So that's, that's the story there. Oh, and the water is heated through solar. Should point that out. You see there's only one line running in there. So it does take a while to warm up, but 
gets the job done. Gets it done nicely. It was so nice. I got out of the pool yesterday and then had a nice rinse with the warm water on the patio. It was so fun. Closed. You keep the keep the swim shorts on. Not like standing out here like naked. I don't I don't think that that's a great idea. At least not in broad daylight. Yep, too many delicate areas to get sunburned. Hey Tobes. How you doing, Tobes? How you doing, Turbo? Always in the spot. Okay, I think that that's where things end for this week. So like I said, just try and take it easy. Just for like a couple more days. Not really in any pain as of this afternoon, this morning. Things are still pretty stiff, but I just, I don't want to push it. Everything else I need to do is going to involve a lot of bending down and squatting and digging and lifting heavy things. Just trying to be careful. Sorry the video's not... Well, I mean, I think it's plenty long, but I know people like them really long on the Saturdays. It'll be a garden tour next week. At least there should be, as long as I get around to it. And then with the vlog, I'm gonna have over an hour's worth of videos next week. <laughs> I'll be feeling, what did you just get? What is that? <laughs> okay, all right, it's just a stick. You can have the stick. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your gardens? Look at that, can you see it? Mimosa? Looking beautiful, covered in flowers. I have a lot to show in the garden tour. I've been intentionally avoiding showing too much of the garden because that just doesn't make the garden tours boring when you see everything with the, in the vlogs in the next video. It's like, hey, here it is again. I've been trying to keep the camera far away. What happened here? Did the drip not run? What the heck? Okay. Can't imagine how that happened. That popped back in there. Supposed to be running like 10 minutes and that'll take care of that problem. <sighs> Boy. But yeah, a couple more days and I'm not gonna be so worried about the back stuff. The mule palms, so excited. I can get these repotted. I really wanted to do that this week, but it just, oh, I don't think it would have been a good idea. The heck, everything I did over here took a long time to get done. Spent a good amount of time on the yoga mat getting loose so I could be squatted down to film that seashell planter video and to just to get those things done. Like even I repotted the pomegranate, which was yesterday morning. Whew. Oh, that was an intense burn. It was a good one, though. Getting things loose. Uh, I said I was going to go. So comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.